Hey y'all, I'm Jasmine and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be answering some frequently asked questions because you guys always leave me questions in the comment section and my DMs on Instagram, but unfortunately I don't always have time to answer them effectively. So I'm going to do that today. If you guys are interested, keep watching. Also make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe to know more about me, my lifestyle, and pharmacy, and to get a dose of Jasmine. Thanks for watching y'all. Okay, so the first question is, would you mind telling me what you generally learn in pharmacy school? I heard you mention that there's a lot of information to get through, but would you say it's generally memorization based or application based? So with the first part of the question, a lot of people don't know what you learn in pharmacy school. So it varies depending on what school you attend. But at my school, the first few weeks are spent reviewing basic science concepts like biochemistry, um, statistics, um, organic chemistry, so lots of like organizational slash foundational science material. And then during the first year, you kind of dive into more clinical aspects of pharmacy, but you still kind of stick with the basic science your first year. So at my school, during the first semester, we take a class called Molecular Foundations of Drug Action. And that's essentially helping you to learn, understand and learn how mechanism of action works for some drugs, why that's a really important concept. And then beyond that, we learn pathophysiology. So what happens when there's a disease in the body? What changes with the body? Um, you also take pharmacology, so learning how drugs work. Um, we take pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics. So learning what the body does to the drug and then what the drug does to the body. And then beyond that, once you matriculate through the program, a vast majority of the information learned will be about pharmacotherapy, which is essentially you have a patient with a specific disease state. How do you treat that disease state? What are the first medications that you use? And then beyond that, what medications do you use in specialized situations? So the curriculum at my institution is pretty clinical. Um, but in your third year, you can take something called electives. And that's basically where you can take classes that are more refined for your interests. So for example, I took managed care and health policy just because I'm interested in health policy and concepts that relate to those things. Um, but you can take cardiology, oncology, um, community pharmacy, geriatrics. So anything that you're interested in, in terms of electives, you have that option your third year. And then lastly, your fourth year is spent during doing clinicals. So you work in hospital settings, community pharmacy settings, um, and you have the option to do rotations in industry. Um, you have the option to do rotations in insurance companies, PBMs, or pharmacy benefits managers. So you have a lot of different variety during your fourth year, but most of those months will be spent doing clinical rotations. And that's just because it's required for most pharmacy schools to do. So it ranges throughout all four years. And then the second part, would I say that pharmacy is generally memorization or application based? And I would say it's a mixture of the two. So early on, it is a lot of memorization and just understanding basic concepts and science. Um, but the more you matriculate through the program, the more you realize that it's all application based because a vast majority of the exams that I take in pharmacy school are patient related. So you have a patient, you have to treat that patient with the information that you learned from before. So it's a lot of application based patient scenarios. Okay, so the next question is from another high school student and she says, well, the schooling sort of confusing me. In order to become a pharmacist, would you go to get a bachelor's degree first and major in something like chemistry, then go to pharmacy school? Or does it work like that? So honestly, it can be quite confusing. And I'm going to list a video in the cards up here so, so that you can click on it if you have additional questions for high school students that want to become a pharmacist. But there are multiple different ways for you to do it. And I'm just going to tell my journey. So I did a four year degree in biology. And then I applied and was accepted into a school of pharmacy at another university. And now I'm completing four years of pharmacy school. While four plus four is not the only option, you can do two years of prerequisite courses and then go straight into pharmacy school. I think what confuses people is that you don't have to have a bachelor's degree to go to pharmacy school. You just have to take the prerequisite courses. So for me, I got a bachelor's degree just because I wanted to have something to fall back on if pharmacy wasn't right for me. But you don't have to have a bachelor's degree to go to pharmacy pharmacy school. So I think that kind of confuses some people. Okay, so another question is, when I applied to pharmacy school, was it hard to get in? So it just depends on what school you're applying to. So um, a lot of people are talking about saturation in the market, which means there are a lot of pharmacy schools that are graduating a lot of pharmacy students, um, but the job market doesn't necessarily match up with the number of graduates. So I wouldn't say that it's extremely difficult to get into pharmacy school if you have all the things that you need. So if you've taken all the classes, if you've done well in the PCAT, if the school requires that, 
if you've done well um, and have great grades. So if you have all the check boxes listed off to become a student pharmacist, then it shouldn't be that difficult. But for some people, it can be difficult. So it just depends on what pharmacy school you're applying to and how many people are actually applying when you're applying at the same time. So it just depends on the competition when you're going into pharmacy school. But I will say, right well i will say recently that the number of applicants into pharmacy programs are decreasing or going down so the competition isn't necessarily as steep as it once was before so it's not it's not extremely easy but of course you can do it if you want to do it and if you put your mind to it okay so the next question is from my high school student and it says i'm in high school are there any personal tips I should know before I pursue a career in pharmacy? So I do have a video about how to become a pharmacist after high school. Um, but I would say when I was in high school, I had no idea what I really wanted to do. I just went to college and pursued a degree in biology because I thought that's what you do if you want to do anything in science. Um, so I would recommend for any high school students, if you're interested in different careers, in science or in medicine in general, I would say try to shadow those people. So see what a day in their life is like. Email people, reach out and ask, what do you like about your job? What do you not like about your job? What's challenging? What's the most beneficial parts? But by talking to different people while you're in high school, it'll let you see exactly what you want to do in your career. And by shadowing them, you can see it firsthand if this is something that you want to pursue. So I didn't do those things until college, but as a high school student, you should just be focused on making sure that your grades are good and trying to go to college if you're interested in doing that. So ultimately, just try to talk to people and see what they're doing and if it's something you could see yourself doing in the long run. Okay, so I have another question and the question is about what are the best pharmacy schools in the United States? So honestly, um, pharmacy schools are ranked periodically and the ranking just tells you how they relate or how they can be compared to other schools of pharmacy. So I will list on the screen, I guess, the top pharmacy schools in the United States. But I will say that these rankings are, they shouldn't be... The rankings shouldn't be used as the only thing that you use to determine whether or not you want to attend that school. So while I do attend the top pharmacy school in the United States, I would say looking at the curriculum is really important because if you don't want to pursue a career in community pharmacy, let's say, and the school that you're attending specifically prepares you to be a community pharmacist, it's just not going to work. So <laughs> I would say if you are interested in a top pharmacy school, just look at their curriculum and see what options they have for the careers that you want to pursue post-graduation. Okay, the next question is, is pharmacy a well-respected career in the United States, yes or no? And honestly, it just depends on who you're talking to. So a lot of people don't know that pharmacists hold doctorate degrees. A lot of people don't know that pharmacists are trained beyond just an undergraduate degree. So to some people, um, they don't really understand or they don't recognize pharmacy as a well-respected profession. But in reality, it is a great degree program to pursue. You do have the option to earn a great salary <laughs> post-graduation, and it gives you the opportunity to practice and take care of patients to ultimately impact your community. So it just depends on who you're talking to. Of course, I'm biased, but I do think that pharmacy is a well-respected profession in the United States. Okay, so the next question is from someone who's recently been accepted into pharmacy school when they start in the fall. And she says, I was wondering if you could guide me with some tips and tricks with your first year of pharmacy school. Of course, she did watch my video, but she wanted some additional resources to be a successful student during your first year. So I will say that during my first year, I did well academically, but I did suffer mentally. So I will say that try to create a balance early on with how to take care of yourself with also trying to balance and juggle school. Um, but for tips and tricks, I would say start early trying to study before the exam. So if you know that you have an exam coming up, I would say try to start studying a week in advance. So actually write on your schedule, okay, start studying today. Because in reality, the information piles up really quickly. So you want to be prepared for all exams. And also, if you recognize that you're not doing well in the class early on, it's always beneficial to talk to your professors. So try to set up a meeting with them. Try to meet with a teacher's assistant for the class. Try to go to tutoring. Try to do something to basically prepare yourself for the future. So don't wait to the last minute. So for first year students, I would say... Study for your exams at minimum a week in advance and write it on your schedule. And also utilize your resources around you to make sure that you excel academically because your first year is full of foundational information that you'll use for the rest of pharmacy school. Okay, so the next question is from another high school student and she wants to know, um, I was wondering if there are any programs I can take or utilize as a high school student to have a little pharmacy experience. So for high school students, um, 
after high school graduation, you can become a pharmacy technician. So you don't necessarily have to be certified. You can get hired by a company and they can pay for you to be certified as a pharmacy technician. But beyond that, a lot of schools of pharmacy have programs for high school students to introduce you to pharmacy. And I know at my school in particular, there are lots of programs that introduce you to pharmacy, um, let you see what people do as a pharmacy student. So I would say look at different pharmacy schools you're interested in and see what programs they offer for high school students. Just just so that you can explore pharmacy before you actually decide that this is something you want to do because there are a ton of careers that you can pursue and I don't want you to put all of your eggs in one basket so if you're genuinely interested in pursuing pharmacy try to look up different pharmacy schools because they have lots of programs for high school students and if I can find any resources or programs for high school students I will put them in the description box down below okay so the next question is about any additional tips for when applying to pharmacy school um, and I would say for students who are interested in applying for pharmacy school, um, number one, you do not have to have actual pharmacy experience. I didn't have any pharmacy experience, but the university that I attend also has a huge emphasis on research. So I did lots of basic biology research or basic cancer biology research in undergrad. So I utilized the skills that I learned as a student researcher and applied those to my application process. So I will say you don't have to have in-person community pharmacy experience to apply to pharmacy school but i would say schools are interested in well-rounded students so of course they want you to be academically prepared so have great grades they also want you to do well in the pcat if the school requires that but they want you to be an overall an overall good person so they want to make sure that you have outside hobbies things that motivate you things that make you want to be a great person they want you to be empathetic so that you are able to talk to patients and understand where they're coming from and provide the best care possible so overall try to be a well-rounded student try to do things that you're passionate about passionate about and try to do things that genuinely interest you don't do things that you just think will add to a checkbox for pharmacy school um try to do things that you love and relate those things to pharmacy so if you're interested in working out for example try to utilize the skills that you learn by working out so being innovative in the exercises that you do or being resilient in the exercises that you do you can utilize those skills and translate those and talk about those in your pharmacy school application and also in your interview so ultimately try to tell your sto your story be true to yourself and be authentic during your application process okay so the next question is um what are some good majors that you should pursue to become a pharmacist so honestly, a pharmacy school or getting accepted into a pharmacy school is all about making sure you take the prerequisite courses. So you can major in absolutely anything that you want to as long as you take the prerequisite courses that are required by the university you want to attend. So with that being said, a lot of people do major in science classes because those science degrees, they check off all the boxes or most of the boxes for the prerequisite courses that you need. So for example, I was a biology major and when I decided to go to pharmacy school, I only had to take one additional class which was statistics because physics chemistry biology all of those courses were required for me to get my biology degree so the prerequisite courses in my degree they kind of overlapped so it's much easier for some people to major in science degrees and pursue a degree in pharmacy versus majoring in something like art I guess and then trying to go to pharmacy school while you can major in art you just have to take the prerequisite courses it can be it can be a little bit more difficult and take a little bit more time. So major in anything, but make sure you take the prerequisite courses required by the university you want to attend. Okay, so the last question is one that I get all the time and it is, are there any jobs in pharmacy? So I've talked about numerous times on my channel that market saturation is a problem in pharmacy. And essentially, it just means that there aren't a lot of jobs that are becoming open for pharmacists. So what I will say is this is a common problem that happens in lots of careers. So it happens in law. <laughs> it's happening in pharmacy. It happens in education. It happens in uh, basically other careers um have market saturation so pharmacy is not the only career that has market saturation what i will say though is while the number of jobs are not growing at a rapid pace it doesn't mean that that should persuade you not to pursue a degree in pharmacy if you genuinely love pharmacy and you genuinely want to do this as a career option it is doable you can do it and there are going to be jobs available it's not like there are absolutely no jobs but i will say that you have to take steps to make sure that you are a great 
applicant when you do apply for those jobs. So making sure that you go to a top pharmacy degree program, making sure that your grades are great, making sure that you're able to do a postgraduate training program like a residency or a fellowship, making sure that you're networking while you're in pharmacy school. Lots of opportunities give you ways to get jobs post-graduation in pharmacy. I just think that it scares people sometimes that market saturation is a real concern in pharmacy. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't um, consider these things when wishing to pursue a degree, but I will say it's not impossible. So if you are interested in pursuing pharmacy, I would say go for it. I would say that you, ju you just should be aware that market saturation is something to be aware of. Oh my gosh, thank you guys so much for making it to the end of my video. Thank you all for watching. If you have any additional questions, always leave them down in the comment section below. Leave any video requests in the comment section down below. Also follow me on Instagram and ask me any questions that you have on there. Um, I respond pretty quickly, so just let me know if you guys have questions. But of course, click on another video. It's gonna be popping up really soon. And thank y'all so much for watching again. See y'all in my next video.